five. I just have this image of Tom on the couch being and just shaking his head like I can't do this. I, can't I gotta still. be on the field. Let I gotta be play. doing something like <laughs> working out and winning games and being the man. Mm -hmm. I think that's there are other mentality. things that people do. I you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, Giselle need, apparently needs to show him those Maybe, things or they yeah. need to talk more about those things. But yeah, he's back. Uh, he's got unfinished business on right. the field. I feel bad for whoever it was that was supposed to play for him. Yes. Like the yes. new guy. And is like, ah, oh, I was going to have a chance. Um, Tom's how about the guy who paid a half million dollars for his last touchdown ball oh. and that will no oh, longer yeah. be his last touchdown ball? Well, hey, who knows? Maybe he'll never score a touchdown. <laughs> oh, <so>. I don't know. <laughs> pretty far stretch pretty there, right? Doing that, exactly, yeah. right. All right, let's take a look at your forecast. Happy Monday to you. We're starting off the week with temperatures very mild out they're a little bit chilly as we start off the morning, but by the afternoon, we're going to be just in that sweet spot. A few degrees above average, plenty of sunshine in the mix. Kicking off the day with a little bit of limited visibility along the Oceanside coastline, five miles in Imperial Beach, six at Brownfield. This isn't much trouble out there, but it's really as much as you can come up with to start off the morning because for the most part, we're clear. We'll have those temperatures warm up very nicely by this afternoon. Low 70s across the coast. We're starting off the day with offshore flow going to gain some clouds by the afternoon. Upper 70s in Inland. Plenty of sunshine. We'll walk through what a mild week we have, but we do have a chance for some precipitation in the forecast. I'll let you know when. Uh, uh, back to you for now. All right, Evan, thank you so much. We'll see you soon. Uh, students in several school districts now will be able to ditch their masks starting today. This comes after the state's mask mandate for schools expired as of Friday night. My kids are super pumped about this. Get to see their uh, classmates' faces here. The local school districts are now able to make their own decisions on how to handle masking going forward. The state recommends masks for students, especially for those with compromised immune systems. For many heading to school this morning, this marks a new milestone in the pandemic. Cajon Valley's superintendent shared a video ahead of today's changes. Students, thank your teachers and school staff for a job well done. On behalf of the governing board, we're so thankful and proud of all of you. Welcome back to school. Carlsbad, Grossmont Union, Poway, and others have made masks optional for students. Meantime, both the San Diego Unified and Sweetwater Union High School Districts have announced masks will be re uh, required, will no longer be required uh, after April 4th. We will have more coming up here in a live report at 530. And while the masks are coming out for some students, parents may be wondering when kids five and under will be eligible for COVID vaccines. Well, the CEO of Pfizer says vaccines for that age group could be available as soon as May. The FDA will have to authorize it for emergency use before those shots can be administered. Then the CDC will have to review that data. And now diplomats from Russia and Ukraine, they meet for another round of high level talks today. This as Russia continues its invasion of Ukraine. About 30 cruise missiles targeted a military training facility in eastern Ukraine, just a few miles from the Polish border. At least 30 people were killed in that. And two American journalists came under fire just outside of Kiev. One of them, 50-year-old Brent Renault, was killed, and he's believed to be the first foreign journalist killed in this war. An Escondido business owner and father is on the ground in Eastern Europe right now. He's trying to help people and make sure his family is safe as the Russian invasion of Ukraine continues on. CBS 8's Kirsten Holmes spoke with him about what he's doing to help and how you can help at home. I'm not sure how they will behave if the fighting actually starts in that city, but it seems like everybody's prepared to die or at least prepared to fight. That's Alexander Shumishin talking to CBS 8 on the streets of Moldova on the western border of Ukraine. He lives in the college area of San Diego, but has family, including a nine-year-old daughter living in Ukraine. There are a couple of major cities separating the, the Russian army from uh, where my daughter lives. Uh, since then, one of those cities have fallen but the other one, Nikolaev, is uh, standing strong. My mother-in-law, is she is in Moldova right now, so she we were able to get her out. At this point, I'm emotionally numb. I've exhausted my emotional threshold. Oleg says they've been on the ground doing what they can to offer humanitarian assistance, like giving rides to refugees looking for safety. He and a friend are also buying and delivering medical supplies, which are running low in hospitals across the region. We would buy it in the morning, drive to the border, drop off the food, and then and then pick up some refugees and take them to either shelter 
or an address that they were given by the volunteers locally. But now Oleg says they've cut off humanitarian aid from crossing the border, leaving him and other civilians on the ground powerless to help. And everything around him is getting more expensive. Moldova used to be very affordable. Now they have prices more expensive than California. Before this, rent for $150 per month and now they're renting it out for $150 per day. But Ukrainians and others in the region are resilient. Regular people, regular families, accepting refugees into their homes for free, feeding them for free. People are, are making their peace with it and, and accepting it as basically it is what it is. If we have to fight, we have to fight. As the cost of helping skyrockets, Oleg says that he plans on coming home to rest, regroup, and return to help if possible. Every day is uh, very, very busy. I, when we get back to the hotel room, we just, we just fall down and, and, and wake up in the morning, and then we go again. Since we're not able to cross the border, I don't know. And. The prices here have skyrocketed. All while worrying and doing what he can to make sure his little girl and family are safe. I was trying to be very discreet about what she understands, what she does, because she's nine years old. She knows everything, she understands it. And, uh, and this goes for everybody. Women, children in Ukraine, they're just, they're very strong and, and resilient. Well, that was Kirsten Holmes reporting, and Olex owns Murphy Mechanical in Escondido here, and he says he's thinking of coming back home to the United States either tomorrow or perhaps on Wednesday. He does have a GoFundMe that he says he's using to help buy supplies on the ground there and give rides to refugees who may need them. If you'd like to donate, go to that GoFundMe. We do have a link at CBS8.com. Just click to the link on this story. Well, gas prices may finally be leveling off this morning. The average price for a gallon is still at $5.76. The price increased only three-tenths of a cent overnight. We've set a new record, though, every day for weeks now. But oil prices are finally coming down, dropping around $16 a barrel from their high on Tuesday. Good start to the week, then. In an effort to relieve some of the pressure at the pump, state lawmakers will attempt to push through an assembly bill today, and this would suspend the state's gas tax for six months. If it's approved, AB 1638 is expected to save Californians 51 cents per gallon. The money that would normally go towards paying the gas tax will instead be backfilled with the money from the state's general fund. Uber says it's rolling out a temporary fuel fee to offset record high gas prices, and this will apply to rides and to Uber Eats deliveries, all starting on Wednesday. The money will go directly to drivers. You can expect to pay up to 45 cents on each Uber Eats order and an additional 55 cents per ride. The only exception would be in New York City. That's where drivers recently received an increase already. Uber says it will reevaluate the surcharge in 60 days. And now let's talk baseball, shall we? After about a 100-day lockout, baseball is back. Today is the first day of spring training, and fans and players are making their annual pilgrimage to Arizona and to Florida. They're getting all set for that 162-game regular season the teams are now. they got to get warmed up. For the Padres, their home for the next couple of weeks will be in Peoria, Arizona. If you're not even a baseball fan, you got to come out here just because... The passion rubs off on you from all the fans that come out to spring training because they truly love their teams and baseball. You will have the time of your life. There's nothing else like it. So their first spring training game will be this Friday against the Seattle Mariners. The regular season opening day is on April 7th. The Padres home opener will be April 14th against the world champion Atlanta Braves. Coming up at 530, we'll have a live report from our Dana Marie McNichol in Arizona. She's been uh, watching some of the spring training things mm -hmm. get ready here. And so looking forward to her report. Yeah, and hearing from some fans that are there. Mm -hmm. Well, after uh, Saturday's heartbreak, it was a tough loss there in Las Vegas. The Aztecs will still be going dancing. They're on their way to the NCAA tournament. San Diego State received the eighth seed in the Midwest region. So here's how it all will shape up. They will play Creighton in the first round. And this will be SDSU's first March Madness appearance since 2000. 
2018. Odds makers do have the Aztecs as a slight favorite in that game. In the past, San Diego State 3-4 to four against Creighton, although the Aztecs won their last showdown. The game is set to start 427 p.m. on Thursday. So we have a few days to wait. 427. <laughs> yeah, the TV times for some reason. Oh, yeah. That's there's to the minute like that. Uh, less than two months after hanging up his cleats, Tom Brady announcing that he is now unretiring. He just can't sit on That's the couch, this guy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he decided he is just not ready to watch football from the stands quite yet. He's going to return to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers this season. Brady says as he enters his 23rd season, he has, quote, unfinished business to attend to. Hmm. Okay. Tom Brady's back. I wonder what he's referring to. Just winning more? Uh, well, he's done everything. <laughs> he's won, what, six Super Bowl that. championships. Uh, so yeah. unfinished business means he wants seven. Lucky number seven. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> what did the LFG at the end of that stand for? You had some acronym LFG. at the end. I don't There's know. that tweet. Life, uh, that should, yeah, I don't know. Family games. I, so, I don't yeah, know. there's <laughs> some, uh, something in there. <laughs> So uh, support to him if he needs uh, to head back to the field. Uh, 511 right now as we start off our Monday morning. It is a quiet start to the day. It's going to be a very mild week ahead. Uh, you got the view outside. Another one from Mount Soledad showing what we're uh, contending with. Few low clouds out there, but not much trouble. Sunrise is coming though at 7 a.m. Remember, it was just a few days ago that we would start to allow some of that light to come through in the next half hour or so. Instead, we've been pushing our uh, hour forward really we should say uh, because of uh, daylight saving time but uh, that's because uh, we'll now see that sunrise come closer to 7 a.m. Sunset will come at 656 so remember the start of the spring season is this upcoming Sunday and with it we'll see an equal amount of daylight and nighttime so 12 hours on each end that means we're just shy of that perfect 12 uh, but just under it really as we look outside we've got offshore flow for the most part right now especially along your greater coastline but those winds are going to start to shift onshore uh, by this afternoon. That'll give us a little bit of cloud cover uh, for the afternoon hours along your coast, but otherwise temperatures will remain pretty mild in the low 70s, keeping things just slightly above average. And offshore flow will help keep those temperatures warm, at least to start off the morning and afternoon before those winds start to shift. Temperatures outside as you walk out the door, 44 in Poway, 45 in Escondido, and 34 degrees in Ramona.